So my speech is going to be on social media's influence. And so as young adults, most of us have some form of social media, whether that be Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, a TikTok, something of the sort. This shouldn't be surprising at all because we're all so connected on social media. And with social media being so um, open to everyone, um, it really does connect the world. So social media has been around for around 47 years. We found a lot of things we can do with it. You can market products, sell items, um, connect with family and friends, virtually anyone in the world who has access to the internet, um, show off your talent, a lot of things that you can do with it. So with all these positives, there are some bad things that can happen as well. Um, because social media's influence and how others perceive each other, um, this can affect your mental health and this can be helped with positivity on social media as well. So some positive social media with news, you can, um, instead of sitting down to watch 6 o'clock news or reading the newspaper, you can easily just um, go on your phone on the news app on Google, Safari, whatever, and just look at the um, trending news much easier than um, waiting for that time or reading the newspaper, better than other alternatives. It can boost your self-esteem with people's posting um, on social media. You can like, comment, share posts. Um, and just a like or a simple comment can um, really boost that person's self-esteem and their confidence and it can really just make their day thus overall helping their mental health. And with marketing, um, it is much easier now to market to such a wide audience because so, some people are on social media um, and a lot of people have content. Um, on March 10th, right before spring break, the company Shein um, marketed this swimsuit towards me very easily on my Instagram feed. Um, it was right around spring break time. I'm their target audience. It was a very easy way for them to just get their product out to me if I wanted to buy it. Um, social interaction is increased with social media. It's not the same as in-person interaction, but it is some form of interaction that is good for people to get once in a while. Um, and it can really help, especially in this time of quarantine as well, if it's the only type of interaction that we have. Um, and it can also help you get a job with sites like LinkedIn. It is so much easier to get your resume out to companies and employers that are looking for new employees and they can see your social media to get a better feel for you uh, and to see what you're like out of the workplace and to see if you're a good fit for the job. So with all these positives, there are negatives as well. So the first negative is obviously going to be cyberbullying because you can easily hide behind your screen. People feel like those consequences won't come back to them but they do forget that there is another person who's on the receiving end of this and mean comments and jokes being made about their post or on their post can really hurt their mental health and it can really get to them. Um, another negative is isolation, though that um, social media is some form of um, interaction, it's not the same as in person and it can really um, deter you from getting outside, getting that person on person interaction and really connecting with people. Um, another is a decrease in productivity. I'm sure a lot of people, especially everyone listening, has done some form of um, not being productive with social media, like delaying um, a homework assignment or working or something because they wanted to check Facebook or Twitter or watch a TikTok or something. So an example that I have is on the week of March 1st through the 7th, I spent approximately that, through that entire week 70 hours on my phone. Um, most of it was on social media, I think around, what does it say, about 47 and another 24 hours um, just on social media. Not a good week for me. <laughs> um, and another negative is going to be false information. Um, with being able to post whatever you want, you can easily post rumors and false um, news and it can lead to fake news and a very confused audience. And then the last um, topic I have is the effects on mental health. So the first one's going to be um, how diseases and disorders are being not taken seriously. Um, uh, research was conducted on Twitter that showed that users on there really threw on the word depressed and suicide like it was absolutely nothing and that is a very serious topic and a lot of people do struggle with that and they were making jokes out of it and not taking it seriously and all of that. And then another disease that was not taken seriously as well out of the rest of them. The most was schizophrenia, and a lot of people do suffer, suffer with this as well. Um, and it can really harm and make people feel bad about, you know, those problems because a lot of people do suffer with them if they're just being taken as a joke, and it can really make them lose the impact of what they actually are. Um, and next is comparing yourself to others that can really lead to a bad mental health um, problem. So people post the best content of their lives on social media 
whether that be um, looking their best, being with their friends, going on great trips, all of their good stuff, but nobody really posts the bad stuff that happens in their life. So if you're only seeing the good parts of somebody's life, you're going to think that that's their whole life and you're going to envy that life. So people usually um, judge others on an upward or downward direction, which means that you're going to make yourself feel better about yourself because of what they post, or you're gonna make yourself feel worse about yourself because of what they post. People do this subconsciously, and this can lead to a very toxic rabbit hole that you fall down. Um, and in the long run and the longer time you spend on social media, this can diminish your self-confidence, um, self-esteem, your happiness, and your mental health. Sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> and lastly, this leads to my final topic, that social media is addictive. Um, a lot of people don't believe that it is, but there's a lot of hard evidence that does prove that social media is very addictive. Um, a Nottingham Trent University study found that social media's addiction stems from the neglect of personal life, mental preoccupation, escapism, mood modifying experiences, and concealing addictive behavior, which are present in most of those who are on social media. And lastly, a um, research was conducted from Swansea University that showed that people go through a feeling of withdrawal whenever being without social media for a period of time, which um, basically is because they feel like there is something that they're going to be missing out on if they don't have social media and if they like aren't going to be on it. They feel like there's something that they need to see right in that moment when most likely there's nothing that they're going to be able to or that they need to see in that moment. And companies have noticed that people are spending way too much time on social media and not doing a lot of things um, productive that they should be. And the company TikTok has noticed that their users are just sitting on TikTok, staying inside and just spending way too much time not getting sleep on their app. And so they made the account TikTok Tips which is an account with popular creators and they just tell their viewers to go outside, get some sleep, turn off your phone, get something to eat, something like that. So in one video, the creator Gabe Irwin says, I understand it's easy to keep watching videos and trust me, I've been there before, but those videos will be there tomorrow. Go get some extra sleep, turn off your phone and do yourself a favor and get, have a great night. And this is what the account looks like and it is run by TikTok, but the popular creators do send videos to TikTok for them to post. And so this just shows that even companies agree that their that their apps and social media platforms are very addictive, especially TikTok with their um, short videos and whatnot. Um, but some companies would rather you get off of their apps rather than um, like going and get some sleep, and they'd rather have you take care of your own mental health. And in conclusion, um, social media may seem innocent, but there are a lot of harm that can be done to your mental state. Um, and there can be a lot of hurt to yourself if you compare yourself to others or just throw around loose terms like depression and suicide um, to make the words lose their meaning. Um, and it can take up a good portion of your time and distract you from um, uh, things that you need to get done. Um, some positive social media, again, are learning um, new things, uh, businesses. Um, it's good for to spread positivity, for finding content to make you smile. And it's going to take some time away from social media and just stay mentally well. Being constantly online can be entertaining, but it can also be a downfall.